Sports Review London Boxing News from the Capital City with match room promoter Eddie Hearn. Ed, just to add the final press yeah. conference there for Groves Lisa and a fantastic undercard. Mm. How are you feeling ahead of the first show? Good, I'm excited. It's been a while. You know, it's been, uh, well, blimey, six or seven weeks since the O2 and, you know, a really good, good show on Saturday. Probably a bit more of a trade card than usual. You know, I think a lot of people like these huge names and, you know, we often get criticised for huge names, not always in huge fights, but I think here you've got a lot of good, good fights and Ryder Kamitsky's a great fight, Hibbert Ryan's a great fight, uh, McKenzie against Kelvin Young's a great fight, Ben Hall against Ajudeh is a great fight, so, you know, you've got Groves against Luis, is going to be very explosive as well, so I'm excited, excited to go to the Copper Box, not, not been there before, it looks fantastic, and about 5,000, so that'll be a good crowd on Saturday, so I'm excited to get the year kicking off. Was that a case of a, a bit preferred venues being booked up or you just wanted to yeah, eventually the, the, you know, Obviously we've been doing a lot of the O2 lately and it's always difficult to get a date there. We're there on April the 9th. Copper Box was just somewhere I felt like we'd, we'd give a crack. You know, we've got um, Hibbert against Martin, which, you know, although uh, uh, Martin is from Peterborough, he sells a huge amount in London and, and obviously you've got uh, Ben Hall from Chabal Heath and Chris Adjadur from Brentwood, so not too far away as well. And, you know, I just felt as though it, it's a great arena and, you know, it's never really been full up before with those kind of numbers. So, you know, I think um, we'll see how we go. O2 will always remain prodig probably the, the prodigal home of Anthony Joshua, but, you know, we can't go to the O2 with every single show. So, looking forward to the Copper Box. Your relationship with the Salem brothers has always been a, a, on, on par, a great relationship there. Is that is that something you you you, you relish? You know, to get in, obviously George isn't your fighter, but mm. being able to to come in with the lights of Salem and yeah, you, you I, basically showcase. To, to be honest, I, I probably pride myself on the fact that I don't let emotion ever get in the way of doing good business. And you know, people say, "Oh, wow, you're working with Groves again." I didn't think you like each other. No, I, I mean, I, I quite like George Groves. I don't think he particularly. I mean, he's not going to send me a Christmas card, but um, I know that when I put George Groves on Sky, he rates well. And, you know, he's entertaining, people like to watch him. So I'm very, very pleased to have him on. And of course, you know, the, the deal with the Salans and we made a number of big fights together, hopefully, makes it even more in 2016. It works really well. You know, we're two young promoters, I think we've got the same kind of ideas, um, you know, both from a brand and, and business point of view as well. So. You know, I think there's some great fights out there for George Groves. I love the Martin Murray fight for George Groves. I think it's, it's a wonderful fight. But of course, you've got De Gaulle, you've got the Carolis, you've got Chudinov, you've got Abraham. So I know that he's going to be involved in big fights, and you know I want to build those fights on Sky. Could that fight with if you if yourself and uh, Sal and sat down, could that fight be made in an Which instant one? with a Martin Murray? I, th I believe so. You know, I don't think uh, Murray's going to be too difficult to deal with on that fight he wants the fight he wants to be involved in big fights and that is a really big fight it's a dangerous fight for both but I just I think it's stylistically it's a, it's a brilliant fight and uh, you know I think that, that could be on the agenda for spring summer 2016 spoke to two young men John Wayne Ibbett Tommy mm. Martin many media you can hear the whispers yeah. back there that they think that's going to be the fight yeah. of the yeah. night at some stage Tommy may just try and box but Bearing in mind the sparring sessions they've had, they will mm. go to war yeah, I think at some stage on the night. I haven't spoke to them about their, uh, their tactics, but you've got to think Tommy Martin's going to try and box in that fight and try and be smart. John is very experienced, you know, definitely got the better pedigree, definitely been involved in the tougher fights, but again, that can have its effect as well. You know, he had three wars with John White, uh, with Dave Ryan, you know, and uh, a couple of other fights as well with, with Good John and, and people like that. So. I think that um, Tommy's the fresher of the two, but John looks really well, and I think he's trained really hard for this fight. I see it's a great fight, you know. Two, two guys who, you know, I've really. You look at John Wayne Hibbert, you know, when we picked him up, he was sort of boxing around southern area level. He's gone on to win a WBC international, get world ranked, win the Commonwealth title, but also boxed at the O2 quite a few times in front of 15, 16, 18,000. So, and Tommy Martin as well, you know, when we signed him, he. You know, dreams of probably becoming an English champion, did that, and now he, he sits before winning a Commonwealth title on on a Saturday night. He sold 700 tickets or something like that. All come down from from Peter Bryce. Fantastic! Yeah, it's going to be a great atmosphere and, and a complete pick and fight. I don't know how it's going to go. Most definitely. Um, word on the street: the Joshua information confirmation comes out maybe early next week. Yeah, Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean. 
loads of people in the mix, you know, everyone's phoning me up, journalists going, off the record, who is it? I don't know. You know, I know Chisora's in the mix for the European, uh, Bryant Jennings is in the mix, uh, Stavern's in the mix, um, you know, Dufas is in the mix, Lo loads of different fighters. Um, a lot of people at the moment either using Joshua's name or calling him out. Um, you know, did, did, sorry, did, did Malik Scott ever enter the equation? Because yeah, I know no, he, no, he no, came yeah, to the press Malik, conferences. Malik Scott was, was mentioned. I, I just, I don't think that Malik Scott's got a style that's really entertaining for, for the, the fans. Good fighter, good technically good fighter. Talks a great game, but you know I, I, he hasn't really. We haven't discussed the fight with him. Um, but a lot of these guys are calling Josh out. You know, Hay Fury mentioned him the other day. Um, Joseph Parker, Jared Miller, um, all these guys, but uh, how many of them would really step in and face him now? Um, some would, I'm sure. They all want a fortune, by the way, so it's easy to price yourself out in the same time as well. So, But we're, we're doing our own thing, you know, we're progressing nicely. The next fight will be a step up. It's going to be a big fight on April 9th and a huge card as well. So, you know, we're, we're going about our business. He listens to his training team in terms of who he wants to fight. Uh, he'd fight David Hay tomorrow. That's that's what fighters do. You know, we have to make sure that fight comes at the right time. When it does, it'll be a record breaker, and it's inevitable as well. It's bound to happen. Um, but probably for both guys, they probably you know would fancy that in, in two or three fights time rather than next. Although both would say they fancy it next, because they probably they're fighters. But uh, it's a big fight, and um, you know, Joshua's going to be involved in huge fights over the next two, three, five, ten years. He's 25 years old. You know, you're talking about really you know, moving into your prime as a heavyweight in your early 30s. So we've got our time, but we're also under pressure to make some big fights for him. So he's about getting the mix right. Ed, we just touched on it there, the, the David Hay fight. If, if Josh is out on April 9th, David A, May 21st, yeah. I believe, at the O2. Um, is it possible that, that this fight now goes into 2017? Uh, yeah, or the end of 2016. I mean, I, this is. It's tough saying it's a stadium fight because then everyone thinks you're making excuses for not doing it in the winter. But, but it is a stadium fight, isn't it? And uh, we're going to box April the 9th and then again end of June, early July. And then probably again September, October. So could it be made for September, October? Yes, it could. Our aim is to become world champion and we've got to find the right route and path to navigate to that title. David's definitely not on that path in terms of getting a world title, but he is on that path in terms of super fights. So it's, it's a fight that Joshua's licking his licks, lips at. It's the one that I'm licking my lips at. And it's one Sky Sports are licking their lips at as well. So everybody's too interested for it not to happen. But to end of 2016 and spring summer 2017, I, th I think it's almost a dot on the cards. Truth in the uh, what the IBF, what's happening with the IBF at the minute that he could become in, put into a position to become Charles Martin's mandatory. Yeah, you know? nothing yet. I mean, if Tep, he's, there's a th few things going on with Tepper. Obviously, uh, we could get a final eliminator against Takam, which is quite a good fight. Uh, he's on the list as well. It's just a case of do we want to become mandatory? On a 75-25 split, you know, it's it's a tough one. We'd love the Charles Martin fight, you know, give him 50-50 now, and he'd make five million dollars, Charles Martin. But they're not going to send him, you know. And uh, but in time, you know, you, you create too much money for these guys to turn down. So we're okay. We, we're not saying we want to. If the right fight comes up, like I think, you know, we'd probably fight Charles Martin in April or June, July. That's but that's no disrespect to Charles Martin. That's the level that I think he's he's at. Now, would we fight Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury in April or June? Ideally, I'd like him to have one or two. I think he beats them both now, by the way. You know, and people always get confused with me saying he beats them now compared to we'll fight him in a couple of fights' time. Because it doesn't matter, you know, it, you, when you've got an investment like Anthony Joshua, you don't need to take pure risks at this stage. I don't even want a 50-50 risk to be honest with you at this stage and sorry to fans you have to be brutally honest I don't mind taking 80, 20, 70, 30s but we, we've got to chisel this diamond into the most beautiful stone and when we're there we'll fight them all and he'll beat them all and, and you know, I believe he beats Tyson Fury now I believe he beats David Hay now but we want to be 100% sure and 100% ready no doubt it just finally from me uh controversy with the Amir Khan Kel Brook situation 
is that just a total dead issue to you now, Ed, or do no, you still I said, hold I just said in an interview, um, you know, these these things can change. I mean, in the last 24 hours, we've, we've had quite a few rays of hope in that fight, you know, and I've become a lot more confident in that fight happening. Contact? But, yeah, yeah, there's always contact. I mean, the good news about this situation is there's ongoing contact, and that's always gives you hope. Probably if you would have asked me 48 hours ago, I would have said, it's completely dead, waste of time. Is that but, through the Al Heyman Avenue? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a few avenues. So, you know, obviously, some people are saying different things, but I, I believe there is now, for the first time I've seen, um, a genuine want to make the fight. And when you have that, gives you great hope. And that's the same with Quig Frampton. You know, when you realise everybody really wants to make this fight, you can work it out. So, Calm Brook, I feel like everybody's in that boat. Um, and if everyone's sensible, I think it'll get made. Fantastic. Eddie, right, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Cheers. Thank you.